Hey guys, Nate here with Red Tech and final part three of our camera prep series. So this one's gonna be a little bit more advanced, so let's, let's get to it. We're gonna make sure that your remote start stop is set up for your Preston. The style of the trigger will be either a basic momentary closure or a Schmidt style trigger, which will roll the camera when it receives a constant 3.3 volts and then cut when the voltage is taken away. Both circuit diagrams can be found in our operations guide. The Schmidt style trigger is what you would use on Epic Bodies and the DSMC2 base expander. The other DSMC2 modules like the Red Bolt expander, VLOC IO expander, or Jetpack expanders all use the basic momentary trigger. Let's make sure this is set up properly in camera. We're going to go menu, settings, setup, GPIO sync, and select the brain GPIO tab. For the momentary style, set high to key disabled and low to record toggle. For the Schmidt style trigger, you want to set high to record start and low to record stop. Test bump to make sure everything is all in order. Okay, next, frame guides. We're gonna kind of cruise through this one a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go menu, settings, display, guides. There are three independent sets of guides that you can set for the camera. What has become sort of common practice is setting the primary frame guide to full and the scale at 100% because we want the full recording area. We'll make the appearance red call this A camera, and then I like to set the opacity to 75%. The second one we're gonna set up is the action guide. Uh, that one we're gonna go to user. I'm gonna set my aspect ratio to 2.4, and I'll bring the scale down to 90%. This is the extract that I want. I'll go ahead and change this again to red for A camera. Make sure that I switch bracket to solid because we want full lines. And I'm gonna bring this opacity up to 100%. We can also, if we want, go into absolute. And it maintained our extract area. But now with this, we can go to lower resolutions for high speed. It will maintain that same scale ratio. Another thing is general. I like to set the shading relative to the action guide. And I'll set this to 50%. What I really like is to add a little bit of shading in the outside area of the extract. Everything is still being recorded, it just makes it a little easier to see your frame. Every single button on the camera is user assignable. Oftentimes people will either want the keys on the LCD to be something specific or fully disable them altogether so they aren't accidentally hit. We're gonna go menu, settings, setup, keys. Under the key mapping tab, it will tell you to press a user key, it'll pull up whatever that key's assignment is, and you can select key disabled. This is a good time to point out that pressing user key one and two on the LCD will lock the screen and prevent any accidental changes. To unlock, press the two keys again, or press and hold the lock in the center of your screen. Okay, now I'm gonna dip into black shading and fans, uh, which we'll cover a little bit more in depth later and kind of go over the science behind it, but I kind of just wanna get you set up now. So for black shading, we're going to go into menu, settings, maintenance, calibrate, sensor. There are two options for calibrating the sensor. You have auto and manual. The manual calibration takes roughly seven minutes and is specific to the shutter speed and current temperature of the camera. The auto takes about 45 minutes, but it covers the full spectrum. The camera will do the thinking for you and apply the necessary calibration maps as the temperature or exposure time changes. So when should you black shade the camera? Black shading should be done at prep, uh, to troubleshoot a lit pixel, um, or whenever there's an extreme change in temperature. If you're transitioning into nights and it's so cold outside that the camera can't reach its calibrated temperature, then you want to let the camera get to whatever it's gonna sit at and then run another black calibration at that temperature. You never wanna pull a cold camera off of a truck and hit record without letting it warm up. Thankfully though, the new DSMC2 bodies, uh, they have a heater on the sensor board allowing it to get up to that temp much faster. So let's talk about fans and stuff. We'll go menu, settings, setup, fan control. Generally speaking, I recommend people use Adaptive Preview Quiet Record. 
This means the camera will automatically manage the temperature in standby and dip the fans down on record. If it's an intimate scene and the sound is jabbing you with their boom pole or something, you can go to a manual setting and lower the record speed. Maybe start at 30 and see how they feel about it. Keep in mind that the camera will get warmer in record and you'll have to pay closer attention to your T and E indicators. Head over to red.com and pick up the free red toolkit. Go to support, downloads, other. This will give you a red frame guide creator and a red key mapper. This will allow you to make a layout for your guides, uh, assign all your keys and buttons, save it as a preset and load it into the camera when you get to prep. Be sure to comment below, email redtech at red.com. Uh, let us know what you think. Let us know what you would like to see in future episodes. And I will see you guys out there.